Okay, so this problem is going to be combining a bunch of things that we've already reviewed so far in this course. We're going to have product rules, chain rules, inverse trig functions. We're going to do it all. Okay, so let's start with this first piece. The first piece has an inverse sine in it, which means that we have to use the formula for the derivative of inverse sine, which we derived earlier. It's going to be uh, u primed over the square root 1 minus u squared. So we're going to apply that formula to this one here. The u is going to be 1 fifth. So we're starting out by doing that. For this we have 25 and then we're going to apply the formula for this. u prime is that's a 1 fifth x which means that when you do the derivative you're going to get a 1 fifth on top. Okay, So 1 fifth on the bottom we have the square root of 1 minus u squared. So 1 minus x over 5 squared. So that's done. That first part is complete. We have a minus and this part because you have two things multiplied together that requires a product rule and the second piece is going to have to involve the chain rule. Now because we're doing the product rule and there's a minus sign out front I need to put these brackets here to make sure that the negative gets distributed to everything that I have inside. Let's start with the product rule. Product rule says you take the first thing times derivative of the second to start out with. So we have x times, okay, we have to do the derivative of this. This part can be written as 25 minus x squared to the one half power. So when we do the chain rule, the outside power, that one half, that's going to come down. I have 25 minus x squared. I got to subtract one from the exponent, but then don't forget, you need to multiply it by the derivative of the inside because we're doing chain rule. The derivative of negative 25 minus x squared is going to be negative 2x. That's your derivative of the inside using the power rule. So I got first times the derivative of the second plus the second thing, which I'm just going to write as 25 minus x squared, and then times the derivative of the first. The, derivative, the first term is x, so we just get a 1 there. And this whole thing is going to be your derivative. So now, because it says we have to write this as a single fraction, we need to do a lot of cleanup on this to get our answer down. And yeah, it does simplify down pretty nicely down to a single fraction. So let's start uh, by doing that. First thing we'll, we'll do is do 25 times 1 fifth. You'll get a 5 on top. And on the bottom, I'm going to get common denominators with what's inside the square root. So I'm going to kind of do a couple things together. First, I'm going to square the x squared in the 5, and I'll get x squared over 25. So then, I need to get common denominators with that. I can multiply the 1 by 25 over 25. And so when I put all that together, this is what you're going to get as your uh, single fraction inside the square root. 25 minus x squared over 25, all that's going to be in the square root. So again, square top and bottom, common denominators, you'll get this uh, as your answer. We can do some more simplifying with this later, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Let's now simplify the part that's inside the brackets. We still need to keep the negative on the outside. So I'm going to just work with this part first. I have the twos here are going to cancel. Because I haven't distributed the negative sign yet, I've got to keep the negative on the inside. So I get uh, for this negative x squared. And at the bottom, I'm going to write this as the square root of 25 minus x squared because I have this raised to negative 1 half power. The next part, I'm just going to leave it as 25 minus x squared to square root times 1. So now I have that complete. Once I get down to here, the next thing I want to do is uh, simplify this part and distribute the negative sign. This is going to be 5 over square root of 25 minus x squared over 5. Square root of the top and square root of the bottom separately. And then I can get rid of these brackets because I'll distribute the negative sign. Negative negative is plus, so I get plus x squared over square root of 25 minus x squared. And then negative square root of 25 minus x squared I get here. So now I don't need the brackets anymore. Once we get down to this point, we need to start getting common denominators because it's asking us to write this as a single fraction. So we're going to come up here and continue this. The first thing that we can do here is notice that the, this first fraction, you can flip that. So if you flip that fraction over fraction, you, you're going to get 25 on top because we're taking 5 over 1 times this reciprocal. So you get 25 there. Square root of 25 minus x squared. Okay, so we get that part. 
and then we still have the rest of it, x squared over the square root of 25 minus x squared. Now, this last one over here, we need to turn that into a common denominator because we want to get it right this as a single fraction. So I still have the square root of 25 minus x squared, that's my common denominator, I need to get that on this one. So for this one I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 25 minus x squared. That way I'll be able to get the same denominator uh, down below. So now I can erase this and then when we put everything all together, we can write it all as a single fraction, the square root of 25 minus x squared that goes down below, that's our common denominator. I have 25 plus x squared for the first two I can combine together. And then I have a minus. This part, when you multiply the two square roots together, you just get itself whatever you have on the inside. So I get the just 25 minus x squared, the square roots are gone. And then I can simplify. 25 plus x squared minus 25 plus x squared. You want to make sure you distribute that negative. That's why in this problem, the negatives are actually very important to make sure you distribute everything correctly. By doing so, you'll notice that the 25s will be able to cancel out. So we can finally, once we do all that, write our final answer. x squared and x squared is 2x squared. And then in the bottom, I have the square root of 25 minus x squared. That's as far as we can go. Remember that you can't take the square root of each one of those separately, so this would be as far as you can go with your answer as a single fraction.